What is up guys, New Limits here and today I am bringing you a leveling guide for the Barbarian. We were able to clear a 1 to 70 run in 50 minutes using the Fury of the Vanished Peak and Bracers of Destruction. So that combination is really nice. I will be doing more guides on the other variations that you can have for the Barbarian and for other classes. Also, we are not using the Shadow Clones in this video so you would be even faster in Season 22 but my idea is to make these guides so you can use them for other seasons as well. A like would be highly appreciated as these guides take a very long time to make and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through the gameplay. Alright, so we're gonna create our character. We're gonna use the Barbarian of course, we're gonna equip the wings and we're gonna equip the pet. The pet is for the gold pickup, the wings really don't do anything so you don't really have to if you don't want to. We're gonna create a adventure mode game on Torment 1. You're gonna save and close, you're gonna do the challenge rift and then you're gonna start the game. You're gonna open the challenge rift bag. We're gonna instantly craft a two-handed axe but you're gonna train the mystic and the blacksmith first. You're gonna craft a level 72 handed axe for the level reduced requirement. You're looking for the percent chance on the secondary rolls and the life per hit on the primary rolls to make sure you have the most chance to get the level requirement reduced. We're gonna roll five times. If you didn't get it in those five times, you're gonna craft a new level uh, 70x and try it again. I would say by about two or three axes. If you didn't get it at that point, you're probably not really gonna gonna get the level reduced requirements. Now you can keep on rolling because the level 70 weapon is the most important one that you want. Now here what I do is I actually make a, uh, make a mistake to con convert the arcane to uh, the arcane dust to veiled crystals. You really want to be using the reusable parts. Alright, now it, this is really important. Of course you won't have the cube at this point. So you would do this step in a seasonal journey uh, in, in the season when you are doing this. You would first of course get the, uh, get to the runes of Cicheron, get the cube first and then convert the, uh, the items of course. So you would not be able to craft about the last, um, what is it, like two to three axes at this point. But you will be able to craft them once you get the cube. So you would totally be able to do this. We go over this in just a little bit how much materials we use. So you wouldn't be able to do everything. You can, You could make the blue ones right away of course because they don't use veiled crystals. You are gonna run out of veiled crystals at this point because you can't convert them yet. But once you get the cube you can make your last axis and you're gonna be fine. Uh, this is with the rare upgrade that we are also gonna be doing once we get the, to the runes of Seshuron and we do that. But I'll show you right away. So you can transmogrify your weapons. This is gonna make it so that if you click on salvage all, they're not gonna disappear. Now the only unfortunate part about this is that for console players, this does not work. So apparently if you salvage all in on console, you're still gonna just delete everything. Uh, and that would be very unfortunate if you're in a season and you think it's uh, it's correct and you salvage all. So please be aware of that for console players. It does not work. So we're gonna buy at the merchants. This is just a, such an important step throughout the whole leveling process. Every single time you go back to town and you reset a game. Uh, you reset, you go back to the merchants, you purchase, you play the game, you go into the temple of the firstborn, you go back to town, you reset the game, you go back to the merchants. Every single time this is super important to keep your gear updated. So now we're going to the Templar, we're gonna hire him, we're gonna take the weapon from the Enchantress, sometimes it's stronger. In this case it is actually stronger. So are we going to be using that? Now we're going to the runes of Seshuron. So yeah, the only thing that would be different when you're actually leveling is that you couldn't get all the two-handed axes right away. You would have to get the cube first. You would have to convert the, the level 70 axe that you couldn't use for the level reuse requirement. You're gonna take page 7 
you are going to convert the reusable parts to veiled crystals. And then you can make the other two-handed axes that you could create. And then you're, uh, you're good to go. And you can do everything that I just did here. Now this is a, a little trick that you can use if you see a lot of enemies right from the start when you're level 1. If you group everything up together and you kill them, you're gonna get instantly level 3 because you also deal damage with your level up. And that damage is actually gonna help you to create, to get another level instantly. So of course, don't forget in season 22, you will be getting the Shadow Clones, which makes this even faster to level with. But I want to create um, leveling guides that you can use for this season, but also for a different season. So I am not using the seasonal buff at all. So it's always relevant. But of course, in Season 22, it is gonna be way faster. It's probably about 5... 5 minutes faster, maybe 10. Because we do get find a lot of shrines. And we would definitely be able to use it. Alright, so here we are just running through the runes of Sisharon. That guy is incredibly annoying, the Garan. Very, very annoying. But you could have seen before as well, because there is so much to talk about. So that's why I also put the notes there, that you can watch them. Because I have so much to say. To make the run to the runes of Sisharon a little bit easier, you're also gonna craft the other weapons. That is why we crafted two two-handed, uh, two one-handed axes from level 5. We created a two-handed axe level 8, uh, a dagger level 10, and a sword level 12. This is actually to just make it a lot easier for us uh, throughout the runes of Sisharon. This is an incredibly annoying zone and I really tried to make this as efficiently as possible because these runs are actually not easy at all. The, the monsters here are annoying, the map layout is very bad, uh, you always have to search for the exit. You can run around very easily and have no idea where you're going. So this is really annoying. So if you get those weapons it's just gonna help you out just a little bit to make it a little bit easier. Now what you would generally do, and I get a little bit lucky in this run that I can keep on going. Generally, you're gonna feel in Torment 1, once you reach about the level 7 to level 8 mark, that you are going to fall behind in damage, uh, and mainly in toughness, so you have a, a, a really high chance to die. So what you wanna do is, uh, once you notice that you are just dying very, very easily, you can always just swap it to heart. So you're not gonna play on Torment anymore, you're just gonna swap the difficulty, and you're gonna go for... And you're just gonna go for... A uh, heart. You could also go for Expert, but Expert isn't really all that efficient. When it comes down to experience with the difficulty level and the amount of effort that you have to put into it. So heart is really not gonna level you anymore, okay? Heart is, is like, nothing's gonna happen. You'll see it once I swap it to heart. My XP just stays still pretty much the entire time. But it's just to get the cube as fast as you can. Because you really need the cube for that uh, rare upgrade. For that legendary power so you can extract it and you can use it. But this run, other than that, is is kind of useless and just something that you have to do. It's not efficient. I tried to make it more efficient as I possibly could. I came up with the weapons. I came up with the torment level at about 7 to 8. You probably gonna have to put it down. Other than that I, I couldn't really get anything else to make it even faster than that. So you can just try to keep it at torment 1 as long as you can and then when you start dying just drop it down. Go to heart and just try to get as fast as you can to get that cube. 
All right, so we're gonna go back once we get into Elder Sanctum. Elder Sanctum, that's the second zone in the runes of Cicheron, is a really annoying zone. Uh, there's you have a really hard time dodging everything there because everything is um, just launching at you. I'll, I'll show you in just a little bit with the gameplay, but a lot of stuff is launching at you and you can't actually dodge it at all. So running around in Torment 1 is pretty much impossible there. For the Barbarian, you just can't do it. And here we're just gonna go back to the Merchant because you can purchase a Helm now. Uh, boots, a belt, so that's gonna give you a lot more toughness. You, you can uh, get Bracers now too. You're gonna get Rings, you're gonna get Amulets if you're level 10. And this is just gonna help you out to be a lot stronger. So what I try to do here, I'm testing my luck. Uh, I'm level 10 already. And you're just gonna see that it is absolutely impossible to do this on level uh, on torment. As you can see, the fireballs they're just shooting at you. The rats they're gonna launch at you. There's just no way you're surviving torment one. I've tried this on multiple times. I did multiple testings. It's just absolutely impossible. So you are just gonna die. Now what you can do is you can uh, push it. Like I am pushing it right here, so I'm just gonna go to Torment 1. Yeah, and I notice like, okay, this is this is just not happening here. Now, I do make a big mistake here. Because I believe the Massacre bonus that I got, 66. I'm not actually sure if I got it on Torment 1 or on Heart. Because I swapped it before I got the EXP. So I'm not actually really sure about that. But, um, you probably should want to wait to get your massacre bonus first make sure you get it on your exp bar and then you want to swap it out because i'm not really sure if it you cannot stand before me. makes a difference i'm not sure all right so now once you've swapped too hard um killing enemies becomes quite a lot less important you just want to get to the cube as fast as you can of course you you want to still kill stuff al along the way Definitely with the weapon that we are going to be using, you really want to make sure that um, you are at least level 12, because that is when you get Seismic Slam, and we're, our damage is going to be a whole bunch higher once we get the uh, Vanished Peak, I believe the name is called. I'm going to check it right here, I can just click it away. It's Fury of the Vanished Peak, Embracers of Destruction, yes. So the Fury of the Vanished Peak reduces the Fury cost of Seismic Slam by 50%, increases its damage by 4 to 500%. So that is what you're just doing here, you want to make sure that you are level 12, and we are level 12 already. Now this is something that... I'm not exactly sure if this is uh, worth it. I think what I should have done is I should have just went straight for the cube, not go for the cursed chest, just get the cube, recall, and uh, restart the game on Torment 3 with the Fury of the Vanished Peak. Now, of course, normally in a normal season, you would not know that you would get the Fury of the Vanished Peak. I was gonna go with that weapon anyways. So I knew, okay, I need to be level 12 for the Fury of the Vanished Peak. Normally, you wouldn't know that, so you might wanna do this. But as you can see here, I'm gaining like barely any EXP. Normally if you would do this on like Torment 1 with the Necromancer, you would get about 4 levels. But on hard, you like barely get anything. So I get one tiny level for clearing this. So I'm not actually sure if it was effective. Like it's, it's really not that much. For a 194 Massacre bonus on hard, it's barely anything. So you want to get the cube? I'm not going to use that legendary. Just because I wanted to keep everything uh, as normal as possible. I didn't want to test my luck too much. So now we got the cube. What you can do now is, you know, convert the axe that we had before. You can convert it to the reusable parts, you can craft the rest of the two-handed axes that you couldn't because of the Veiled Crystals. And then here we are using the third page to get the Mighty Weapon, the two-handed Mighty Weapon. We're gonna craft the two-handed Mighty Weapon, we're gonna extract that power into the cube. Then we're gonna go to Torment 3. 
It's actually really funny how I actually get from the blood shards the bracers of the destruction that I needed in the Fury of the Vanished Peak with my rare upgrade with the two-handed mighty weapon. I was gonna play it anyways, so it didn't really matter. I just wanted to show you what you would do, but I would still use the Fury of the Vanished Peak. And I actually really like it that I that I get those uh, weapons, just to really show you that it is definitely possible to get it. Uh, there's nothing really crazy going on. Of course, if you get a different setup, the skills you are going to be using is going to be different. But the way you are going to be leveling is going to be about the same. Of course, if you get, for example, the Gavel of Judgment, you're going to use the Hota skill. So Hammer of the Ancient. And I'm definitely going to make a build guide on that one as well, a, a level guide. To show you guys how you would play that one out, but I haven't, you know, done that yet because I wanted to focus on this one first. But yeah, I just thought that was really cool that I actually was so lucky to get those two um, items that I just needed. So that was crazy. So what you want to do here is go on Torment 3. You have ex extracted the Fury of the Vanished Peak. We're gonna get just the items, it's gonna give us an upgrade. So why you want to go on Torment 3 is because you do not have the um, the level br uh, the bracers yet because you you have rolled them with the blood shards but you can't use them yet because you can only use them at level 16. So you're just trying to get to level 16 as fast as possible, but Torment 6 is too hard with only the multiplier from your weapons because at this point in time you're gonna have a pretty hard time with your fury management. Unfortunately, the Barbarian does not start with full fury, but with no fury. So you're gonna have to start up and building up your uh, fury generation first. You're gonna do this with your ground stomp and you're gonna do this with your leap. Now also with your threatening shout. But if you go on Torment 6 instantly, you might die before you can get your fury up. So this is why I like to go on Torment 3. It's gonna make it nice and easy for you. You can still almost one shot enemies. So you deal more than enough damage, but you are tanky enough to make sure that you can get your fury and you can actually attack. Once you get to level 16, you just want to instantly put on the bracers, kill everything around you and instantly go back. So don't keep going on Torment 3, you definitely want to go back because you have more than enough damage for Torment 6. But you want to make sure that you just get that level 16 first. So I'm level 16 now. What you want to do is try to back if you can, otherwise pop on the bracers, kill everything that is around you, and then make sure you back. Let's go, you instantly want to do that. Now I'm gonna have everything in the description below, uh, what skills you want to equip on what level. So it's basically saying like level 5 you want to go for uh, rent, you want to change that for rent. Then you go back, you're gonna change that to seismic slam on that level, you're gonna get that passive. So everything is explained in the description uh, on the steps. Also the steps what you want to do, um, going to the runes of Sesheron, then coming back, going uh, for the merchants. Then So everything's gonna be in the description description as well. And the final build is also going to be in the description, so what you want at the end of the setup that I am using in this video, if you get, of course, the Fury of the Vanished Peak, because it might be different for other weapons. So, of course, first of all, uh, once we get our weapons and we're going to get to Torment 6, what you want to do is you want to shift your buyings from merchants from damage to toughness so right now we're gonna really get carried by the multipliers that we get from our bracers and our weapons and we're just gonna make sure that we can survive as much so at the merchants we're definitely gonna focus more on toughness than on damage now if you feel that your damage is falling off a little bit you can always go for a little bit more damage, but generally you really want to be focusing on toughness just so you can take a little bit more hits. So remember, you can just go to the description, you can copy paste 
the steps that I that I am using, the whip, the skills that I'm using, the passives that I am using, because there is so much to say. I can't say everything or come up with everything uh, because there is quite a lot of steps that you you are gonna have to do to make this as efficiently as possible. So. But basically what we are doing here is we're using our Threatening Shout, our Ground Stomp and our Leap to gain our Fury first. Weapon Throw is really helpful to keep your Massacre bonus up just a little bit easier. You also have the mobility with the Leap to keep your uh, Massacre bonus up if, you, if it is possible. It's not always possible of course because it has a pretty long cooldown. But that is how we are gonna get our Fury back. So the Threatening Shout... We're gonna use Falter a after a while and enemies that are hit by the Threatening Shout deal more damage. But really it is a Fury Regenerator, alright? So every skill that we are going to be using is always more so considered a Fury Regenerator than actually the ability that it does. Uh, if that makes sense. So we're basically always gonna be using, we're also gonna change the Earthquake to Furious Charge. Because that also re regenerates Fury. So that is basically the whole idea that we do. Seismic Slam is, is our damage dealer. All the other skills that we are using is in the first place a Fury Regenerator. Of course it gives mobility. It, it, it gives us some really nice stats. Uh, we're gonna use um, War Cry as well. It's gonna give us that toughness a little bit. It's gonna give us more... Fury regenerate, re regeneration, but in the first place, it's just a Fury Regenerator. That is how we're using every skill that we have. So it's really important to keep that in mind. You just want to move around. Make sure you keep moving, that you survive. Once you did the Cursed Chest event, just go back. You already gained quite a lot of levels here uh, in that first run from 16 to level 29. You want to make sure that you don't keep pushing it with the gear that you have. Once you got to the cursed chest, you just want to go back, reset, go back to the merchants, get the skills that you need. So here we're just setting up the skills. Again, you can look at the description what skills we are looking for. On what level, what passives. So definitely you want to just reset. You want to go to the merchants. Make sure that you have the two-handed axe equipped for that level as well. That you have that you deal the most damage that you can be dealing. You want to focus mainly on that toughness on the merchants. Now you don't want to buy items that give you like a massive damage decrease. So let's say you get plus twenty percent toughness, but you get also a minus twenty damage. I don't think that is really. A good idea to be picking that one up but if let's say you are gaining plus 10 toughness and you lose minus 5 damage that is definitely worth it and you should always consider to take that one so this step is actually super important and you really want to make sure that you do that every single time And as you can see on our bar we just have all fury regeneration on our passive we're using animosity which is also just gonna make our fury re regenerators generate even more fury so i that is what i found out that the barbarian struggles the most with definitely at the start getting that fury up making sure you can spam that seismic slam as much as possible and this is what i came up with that is gonna help you the most with that regeneration. So now we're using on the ground stomp wrenching smash. It's really nice to pixel stack some enemies if it is possible for you to do so. Because of course, um, yeah, if they hit you, you you're dead. So you want to make sure that you use the ground stomp in an efficient way. Because you're gonna die very fast, of course. So what you also want to do is not always use all of your skills right away because they are mainly used as fury regenerations you want to make sure that you kind of stack them together. If you have full fury you just spend it all, you then use a skill to gain fury back, you then spend it, you're gonna get use another skill to get the fury back, 
and you're basically gonna stack those together. So you don't want to just leap, furious charge, ground stomp, use your threatening shout, you already have maximum fury. You don't want to be spamming all of that because you're gonna run out of fury to spend and you're not gonna be able to attack for a while because you have to generate that fury again. So it's really important to stack them all together really nicely to use an ability, use your damage dealer, then go use your ability again, use your fury, and so forth. So definitely make every seismic slam that you put down, make it count. You don't really want to be spamming it like crazy. You really have to make sure that you use your seismic slam accordingly to the fury that you have. Because believe me, it does look like my fury is pretty decent. But you're gonna notice when you're playing it yourself that you can run out of fury very fast. If you just keep spamming it, you're gonna run out. So again, here in Season 22, you would get the shrine and it would be just really nice for you gonna help you out quite a bit gonna focus on that massacre bonus of course definitely in this stage it is very easy uh, we're gonna change the leap for war cry in just a little bit but right now you have the maximum mobility that you can get you can still choose to opt for the leap and don't go for the war cry but the war cry gives an insane amount of fury so that's why i chose that one but you can definitely go for the leap if you would like to uh, for the mobility because it it is giving you a very nice massacre bonus so i believe this is like the best massacre bonus i get in the entire run just because of the leap and the furious charge it's a really nice mobility so again we're doing the same thing we're gonna reset we're gonna go to the merchants we're gonna purchase again Want to make sure that our gear is just the level that we are, that we get everything nice up there again. Again, focusing on that toughness. Making sure once you reset that your skills are, you know, the way they are supposed to be. Generally, when you're doing a run, you can't really change your weapons or maybe uh, your skills. Maybe if you're very lucky and you your Massacre bonus has run out, there's nothing around you and you can swap them. That's really nice, but generally when you're doing a run, you're gonna have to run with what you got, uh, what you started with. And you're just gonna have to do the full run with that one. Gonna reset, and you definitely have to make sure that you're using all the passives and the skills that you can use. Definitely level 20 and level 30 are really important because you get an extra passive. So you really want to make sure that you use that passive as efficiently and effectively as you can. So we get Warcry here, the shard just gives you an insane amount of fury, so it's really, really helpful. We're gonna change our left click to Marauder's Rage with the Battle Rage. So we don't have a normal generator anymore, so we were using Weapon Throw, I just get rid of that. I feel like if you go with this setup, your re regeneration is more than enough. What you sometimes wanna do is not instantly attack. But you want to get your fury regeneration up first so you just threatening shout you um furious charge you make sure that you have enough of your fury and then you actually uh, start so here i make a little bit of a mistake i should have ground stomped it a little bit closer to the enemy so it gives you regeneration the threatening shout is always gonna give you generation the war cry is always gonna give you fu fury but the ground stomp only gives you that when you hit an enemy. So you want to make sure that you use that when there are actually enemies um, close by. So here we couldn't unfortunately get the massacre bonus up. Because there were no enemies. And no enemies means, uh, yeah. No massacre bonus, so rip. You can definitely still choose to go for weapon throw if it's a little bit too hard for you to get the battle rage. I just really like it because it's gonna give you some, you know, extra damage. I believe it's 15% extra damage that you are dealing here. 
and uh, yeah I think it is possible to squeeze in just that little bit of extra extra damage smart loot thank you thank you for the um for the two-handed crossbow I appreciate it it's awesome as you can see it's really the damage is is really up there season 22 again shadow clones GG Barbarian is also really useful because you can instantly get the nerves of steel, so you're gonna get some more survivability. I noticed way less toughness problems with the Barbarian than that I did with all of my leveling guides on the Necromancer. Necromancer was harder in my opinion. Of course, this is just a really nice setup, so if you would get different weapons, for example, the Gavel of Judgment, it would be a little bit more difficult because it's more melee. This is a little bit more ranged, so you can keep your spacing and your distance. So it's a little bit easier. But um, but yeah, I thought this was a little bit easier than the uh, leveling guides that I did for the Necromancer. The only problem that I really faced was at around level 65. This was also at the point where I was actually... Um, thinking about oh, holy shit I'm actually gonna do this this run because I got very r lucky with everything uh, I haven't really tested this out all that much I did a lot of the theory crafting I did a lot of the testings early levels what skills you want to go for but I never actually did the last part so the 65 to 70 part which is pretty much always the most difficult and um yeah, I started dying a lot at the end on Torment 6 once we reach about level 65. Just because I got a little bit stressed out because I was thinking like, holy shit, this is actually working, it's crazy. So I was really happy about that. Um, I get too much stress, I kind of die a lot. So what I would definitely suggest is once you get to around the 65 mark, definitely drop it down to Torment 5. Don't go Torment 6. Torment 5 still gives you quite a lot, but you're gonna survive a lot easier. You're gonna see that in the gameplay. I am gonna go to Torment 5 eventually, once I realize, like, okay, this is just not working anymore. Torment 6 is just a little bit too much of the good stuff. So here, I just threatening shout, keep my fury up. You're gonna notice it once you're playing it, that the fury really is the, the biggest issue here. So better rage, you don't need it, you can go for weapon throw. But I just squeezed in that little bit extra damage. Here you really want to make sure that you keep moving around, those fireballs are gonna hurt a lot. Not easy to dodge them because your attack speed is very slow and the seismic slam animation takes quite a long time. So you really have to make sure that you don't just stutter step it, but you actually walk around a significant amount of distance. Because the area damage that the fireballs will have is kind of big. And if you walk forward just a little bit and you do the seismic slam animation, you will still get hit by the, by the fireballs. Now I've noticed you can tank about 2 to 3 fireballs because before you're gonna proc. So you want to make sure that you... Um, walk around enough very unfortunate that i couldn't keep my massacre bonus up there i tried it i went a little bit further but there were no more enemies so that's just really really unfortunate always make sure if you did a cursed chest event and you can backtrack to get the cursed chests like i just got uh the ruby gems this is gonna help you out quite a lot with the experience you're gonna pop uh, pop it into your helm it's gonna give you a lot of experience uh, extra experience. I believe it's like 20% the gems that I have right there. And if you have a socket in your weapon, you're also gonna put it in there. You're gonna create extra damage, which is also just gonna be incredibly helpful for you. But yeah, I was actually really surprised on how well the barbarian can actually do the leveling process if they get uh, this setup right here so i'm definitely planning on on showing you guys more setting uh, setups for different uh, weapons and bracers and stuff that you can get i believe you can get two bracers so the barbarian has a pretty good time leveling actually if you get somewhat lucky of course 
But if you don't get any weapons, of course it's gonna take you way longer. But the rent ability is actually really good to keep your massacre bonus up. That's what I used to use. The rent skill. Alright. So again, you just want to go back, reset, restart the game, go to the merchants. And do all the steps that we've already discussed. But yeah, I'm actually really enjoying this. Like, I've always really enjoyed the leveling process. I, I always thought that was one of the most enjoyable parts of the game. Which is kind of weird because a lot of people actually hate the leveling process. <laughs> and they just want it to be over as fast as possible. But I really enjoy the... The steps that you have to make. You feel yourself getting stronger. At the end you feel that you are barely holding on. And you really have to pay attention to what you are doing or you're gonna die. Um, I just really like all the steps that go into it. The abilities that you use. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is. But I, I really like the leveling process. So I'm definitely gonna be hitting you guys up with more... Uh, ways to level the Barbarian with other classes. So I'm really excited to, to try out other classes. What I can come up with for the Wizard, for the Crusader, for the Monk. At this point I have no idea. Because I was so focused on the Necromancer first. And I just really wanted to do a different, a different class as well. So I thought the Barbarian would be a really nice one. But yeah, we'll see whatever we uh, we can come up with for the other classes to make it as efficiently as possible. I hope I can get the most runs down in under an hour. That would be really nice. But we'll see if it's possible. So here I procced and you're just gonna notice that the damage is getting quite high now. That's why you definitely want to focus on toughness. But what I should have done, and that's actually a mistake on my part, if there is an elite at the Cursed Chest event, you always want to kill the elite first before you start the Cursed Chest. Because here I die because the elite, uh, elites are very strong on Torment 6. You always want to skip them if possible, but with the Cursed Chest event you can't skip them of course. But if you can skip them, if you can't, make sure they die first before you start it. So that was definitely my mistake. And what you almost so saw me do there for the Fury Regeneration, and that is something that you're, is going to be more and more uh, significant once you get to the higher levels, your Furious Charge. Because of course the enemies are going to get tougher, they're going to get stronger, you're going to have to use a, a few more Seismic Slams to kill them. Previously, we, we were one-shotting them. Now, sometimes uh, we need two the, to three seismic slams to kill them. Sometimes we are still one-shotting, but the bigger guys, we need like two to three hits. Which basically gonna mean that we're gonna need more fury. And the war cry, the threatening shout, and the ground stomp is not gonna be enough anymore to keep the fury high enough to uh, put out enough seismic slams. Now for this part it's still quite alright, but once you get to the 65 range you're not gonna have enough fury anymore, so you're gonna have to make sure that with your furious charge, and that is why we are using merciless assault, if you hit an enemy it's gonna reduce the cooldown, if you hit enough enemies, I believe it's around 5 to 6 enemies, you're gonna get all the cooldown back, and what you then can do, can do is you're gonna use your furious charge a few th times, through a few enemies to get your full cooldown back and that's actually gonna help you out with the fury regeneration as well to get full fury on your bar so that is something that you're gonna see a little bit more often that I'm gonna use my furious charge quite a bunch of times through enough enemies to get the cooldown back to get fuel fury so we can spend our our fury with the seismic slam that's what we're doing here So 
So here we were ser searching for a helm with a socket so we can put the gem in. It's going to help us out with 20% increased experience. And of course, as you can imagine, when you're on Torment 6, 20% extra experience is actually a whole lot of experience. So that is something that you definitely want to look out for. And then we're just gonna go back. I believe we have to do about two to three more runs. And at this point you might want to consider going to Torment 5. I believe now it's still fine once you get into that 65 range. You really should go to Torment 5. I think that was definitely a mistake on my part. You should definitely go to Torment 5 instantly. It's gonna make it way easier for you. And I probably would have been level 70 faster than trying to be stubborn and staying on Torment 6. Because that's basically what it was. I was just too stubborn. I was already noticing, like... You can just tell that the damage is way higher. Your health is dropping way faster. And the best thing is, is to not just be stubborn, put your ego aside and just go Torment 5. Because now I'm just gonna make it less worth it for me. So right now it's still fine, but you're gonna see um, in a little bit once I get to 65, it's just gonna be way too hard. But yeah, for the video I just wanted to make it... And this is what I mean with the Furious Charge. So you, you saw me charging all around to get my Fury back. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video as, as fast as possible to show you guys how fast it can go. And that's why I, ke uh, I keep playing on Torment 6. But this was not easy anymore. Like, now I'm tryharding pretty hard. Because I'm noticing like, okay, this is this is difficult stuff. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun though. I mean, I'm, I'm having a great time. But as you can see, the Fury is getting a, a little bit more difficult now. What you could also do is change the Battle Rage for a Weapon Throw now. So for the early levels, you can go for Battle Rage. Once you get into this uh, kind of area, you might want to consider getting a Generator again with the Weapon Throw. You can get the last rune on the Weapon Throw. It's gonna give you, I believe, 9 Fury regeneration if you hit an enemy. 9 Fury is pretty nice. So you have a guaranteed Fury Regenerator then. Right now you're really relying on your Furious Charge to hit enough enemies. And it is quite challenging sometimes to make sure that you hit those enemies. So right here I should have reset. Torment 5. I have no idea why I keep going. Of course, I haven't procced yet, so that's probably why I'm still going. And if you're still watching this right now, I, first of all, I want to thank you so much for, for watching the entire video. I know these videos that I make are, are quite long, and I know a lot of people don't watch the complete video because it is very long. I totally get that. But I just want to provide information throughout the entire run. So yeah, just thank you so much if you're still watching. Really does mean a lot. Alright, and we're level 67. It's actually kind of weird because in my head I was dying way more often. Than right here. This is quite alright. I think this is the run where I screw up quite a bit. Because I get to like 67, I'm like, really happy. I'm thinking, holy shit, this is gonna be epic. A really nice run.
Gonna check real quick how long it still has to go. Ah, okay. For those three levels, it took quite a long time. So yeah, definitely Torment 5 would have been way easier. And faster too. Of course, if it's if this is too difficult for you, just drop down to Torment 4 or Torment 3 at this point. As you can see here, I instantly screw up. I actually managed to get out, but I corner myself, which is a really bad idea. Never do that. And here, the reason why I die is because I barely hit... I needed one more enemy to hit with my Furious Charge to get the full cooldown back. And I thought I had enough enemies. So I Furious Charge, and I was actually pressing my key for the Furious Charge. But I didn't have the charge available yet because of the cooldown, it didn't fully reset. And that was the reason why I died. And that's why it kind of looked stupid and I wasn't really doing anything because I wasn't even moving. But that's with the Furious Charge, so you really want to make sure that you get the full um, cooldown back by hitting enough enemies. And here I just was not fast enough clicking. So here I notice like, okay, this is this is not gonna be happening here. But my uh, my gear is already broken. It's yellow. The effectiveness is less. So this step definitely should have been faster. Uh, here I'm I'm procking again because I didn't have the furious charge available. The cooldown it was on cooldown. And that skill is is like the most valuable skill you have at this point. So I'm using it right now to get my Fury back, the Furious Charge. And yeah, maybe you wanted to go for the uh, Weapon Throw here at this point with the uh, changing the Battle Rage. Because at this point I didn't even use the Battle Rage yet. And I'm actually watching when I'm actually going to be using the Battle Rage. Alright. So I basically probably knew in my head I was not going to be able to make it. <laughs> That's why I didn't use it because I kind of knew I was dying. Alright. I get that. In the future, I might make these runs when I am actually playing. So now I record the gameplay and afterwards I commentate over it. I might do that differently in the future. But if, uh, quite often I play at night. I don't know why but I can focus a little bit more when I'm playing at night. Uh, but I have to be quiet because everybody's sleeping in my house. And then I can't actually talk over it when I'm playing, so that is why I actually commentate over it. It's not because I don't want to, or I couldn't, uh, but just because I have to be quiet. Because I don't want to wake up my uh, my girlfriend. So I really like this rune on Seismic Slam, because it gives just that little bit extra um, CC. Uh, which is basically kind of a toughness, really, because uh, they can't get get uh, get. Wow, that was a really hard sentence. Because they can't get get to you really fast. Jesus, learn to speak. Yeah, that was a difficult one. Uh, because they get knocked up, it is actually really helpful. You could also go for the permafrost, I believe it's called. Um, I used it. I didn't really like it, to be honest. And you can also go for a stagger, which is just gonna reduce the fury. Now, fury is a pretty big part of this build, so using the stagger rune could actually be beneficial for you. But I just liked um, this rune. I, I'm not exactly sure what it was called. I mean, I have it in the description. It's gonna be a uh, link down there for sure. Um, it deals more damage, and it gives you that added CC, so that is what I just enjoyed the most. But it's not wrong, you can go for Permafrost. 
You can go for the uh, uh, stagger rune for sure. It's all a very, very good. So it's really nice that you have a few options to go with for the seismic slam. So now you really want to make sure that you are making your seismic slams count. And here I definitely should have kept my massacre bonus up. Like don't go for that cursed chest. Keep your massacre bonus up. I would have been level 70 just a little bit faster. Definitely control your spacing here. You're gonna die pretty much instantly. Yeah, and just make sure that you layer your Fury Regeneration. Now we're just, uh... We're almost there! making sure now that we don't die spawn as much enemies as you can if you run to the the temple of the firstborn you really know where these insects can spawn and that also makes it a lot easier for you so here i probably could have already stopped i think i would have had enough but i just wanted to make sure with the masker bonus that i will always get it so i get the pool of reflection too to make sure that i get it and yeah I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm really happy that I was able to do this for the Barbarian as well, not only for the Necromancer. I'm going to do way more leveling guides for you guys with different setups, different classes. And yeah, I just want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one.